Welcome to the Library Love Fest podcast. I'm Virginia Stanley. I'm Lainey Mays. And I'm Grace Catanolo. We are the library marketing team at HarperCollins Publishers. We bring librarians and great books together. The new year brings new offerings from our podcast. The first episode of the month will have book presentations, author interviews, voicemails from librarians like you, and more. And our mini episode halfway through the month features our Library Reads winners. Don't miss our winning author's acceptance speeches. Welcome and enjoy the show. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Check it out. Book Buzz, HarperCollins Book Buzz. Brought to you by Library Love Fest. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Library Love Fest podcast. This is Lainey, your friendly library marketer from HarperCollins. I'm here today to tell you all about our library read selections for May 2023. If you are not familiar with library reads, uh, a lot of you are because a lot of you are our voters, our readers and our voters. But if you're not aware, that quickly is just a list of the top 10 titles of the month published in one month that librarians and library staff get together to vote on. They can do that through Edelweiss and NetGalley. They read the e-galleys. If you need a way to get those e-galleys, let us know. We're happy to help you if you work in a library. So that list is uh, voted upon and it comes out every month from Library Reads and we have the scoop. In addition to the top 10 on the list, there's a new thing they're doing called a bonus pick and uh, someone on the board picks this bonus pick and it's something they really loved and they think it should get a shout out. And also there's a Hall of Fame. So after a book has been selected twice on the third time, uh, it goes into the Hall of Fame. That keeps that list fresh. We get some debuts, we get a lot of different books, and um, they still get represented on the Hall of Fame, which is great. This month in May, we have two. We have a bonus pick, which is Jasmine Iolani Hakes, Hula. And then we also have a Hall of Fame author, R.F. Kwong. Her book, Yellow Face, put her into the Hall of Fame. Before that, R.F. Kwong also made the list for The Burning God in November 2020, and Babel in August 2022. So now that this is her third selection, um, it goes into the Hall of Fame. So yay! We're so excited. We love both of these authors, and it was just truly a delight when we got this email in our inbox this week, and the list is officially out, so you can go see the rest of the books on the list, the rest of the Hall of Famers. But now we have our podcast episode, and we love this episode because we get to hear from the authors themselves. So um, without further ado, let's hear from Jasmine and hear a little bit about Hula. Aloha. My name is Jasmine Iolani Hakes, and I am the author of Hula. I'm so honored that Hula has been chosen to be the Library Reads May 2023 bonus pick, in large part because libraries have played such a significant role in my life. Growing up on the Big Island of Hawaii with very limited resources, the Gila Public Library was my bridge to the rest of the world. It was where I, it didn't matter if my mom didn't have enough money, where I was free to jump continents and centuries, and one of the only places I felt a sense of safety, security, and belonging. The Gila Public Library was such a sanctuary for me that I spent my senior year of high school going to school in the morning and leaving during recess to spend the rest of the day shelving books. I put return books back in their alphabetized spots as quickly as I could so I could spend the rest of my shift reading. It didn't matter what section the librarians assigned to me, I read voraciously and indiscriminately. And then later, as a young single mother living in poverty, the library was again my saving grace. The one place my girls could fill their arms with whatever they wanted and I could say, yes, we can get them all. It wasn't until many years passed that I realized what I had been searching for in high school, reading everything I could get my hands on, a book that reflected my world, my Hawaii, complete with all its social complexities and nuance, as well as the political tensions and history I didn't understand and wasn't taught in school. 
one that explored what it means to belong and what defines a family. All questions I was too scared to give voice to when I was younger and all questions I was able to fully throw myself into and explore when I wrote Hula. The Hula Public Library was on my mind often as I worked on this book. The teenage bookshelver me was the reader I imagined I was writing for and picturing it sitting on a shelf in the picturesque fiction section there was what kept me determined to make this story the best it could possibly be. The story itself is incredibly personal, offering an intimate portrait of my dear hometown of Hilo that I am so excited to share with the world, especially libraries, making this honor all that much more special and meaningful to me. So mahalo again for choosing Hula and for all that you do. Happy reading. Oh my goodness. I was so excited when this email came through. Like I said, both of these authors are really important to us and their books are important to us. We had Jasmine on our Writers to Watch program, our monthly author chat. Um, We had her on the inaugural one, and that was amazing. But there was a lot of conversation about exactly what she said, writing a book about the histories you don't know and you aren't taught. And I just love what she said about writing a book that she wishes she had access to. That was really beautiful. Thank you, Jasmine, and congratulations. If you want to watch the Writer's Swatch episode, we'll link to that in the show notes. Okay, and so we have a clip from our other Writer's Swatch program um, with Rebecca Kwong, RF Kwong. And um, I have a little clip from that to hear more about that book. It's in the Hall of Fame. We're so excited. And uh, this one has caused a lot of conversations in our office. I know, Grace, we, we've we all said, like, where, where are you in the book? We couldn't wait to finish. And it's really going to start a lot of conversations. Let's hear a little bit from RF Kwong. So Yellow Face is my first literary fiction novel. I've mostly written fantasy up until this point. Um, and I feel a little bit like it's my gremlin mode book um, because it is so different from my previous work. And it's also a pandemic novel. And you can always tell when a book is so many pandemic novel, first of all, because it's coming out in late 22, 23. And second, because they're just a little, you know, you can tell that everybody went a little bit crazy under lockdown and and wrote the most devious ideas that came to them. Um, So this is mine. And it's basically as if I took every single scandal in publishing, frustration, awkward encounter, racist microaggression, just everything that makes publishing the, the deeply, deeply messed up industry that it is and shoved it into one book. Um, that's Yellow Face. It is just a ridiculous, absurdist satire. Um, of how this literary economy works, whose stories get elevated, who gets paid the large advances, who gets to go on tour, and more importantly, um, how do we treat each other as writers? I've always been really fascinated with the particular difficulties of becoming a writer in, in 2023, when so much of this world is deeply interconnected through Twitter, although who knows where Twitter will be several, who knows if Twitter will even exist when the book comes out. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, etc. All of these online discourses have sprouted about what it means to be a writer, what you have to do to be a writer, what a writing lifestyle looks like. And at the same time that writing has become more democratic and accessible and interconnected, I also feel like we've gotten so distant from each other. So I'm, I'm also writing about the isolation and the terror um, and and the psychological drama of being a novelist in this particular moment and and having rivals, rivals you love and hate, rivals who, if they were choking to death on a pancake, you might just stand and watch die. Um, We have two main characters, June and Athena. June is a struggling writer. Um, Athena's career really kicked off after college and and they're frenemies, but there's always been something not quite right about their friendship. But one night, Athena has June over for drinks. She chokes to death on a pancake and June decides to steal her unpublished manuscript, which nobody has read, and submit it as her own. The one catch is that this novel is about the contribution of Chinese laborers on the front during World War One. So June finds herself pretending to have certain um, 
facts about her identity, her heritage, her history that she does not. She does not correct anybody when they assume that she is Chinese American. So I'm also really interested in how race can be commodified and, and marketed in, in this world where so much has become hashtags, tropes, quick, easy labels. When you have a book talk section at Barnes and Noble, I'm interested in how we talk about books and how we sell books and especially how we sell books by marginalized writers in ways that perhaps reduce them down to just their marginalizations, which is a practice I really disagree with. So Yellow Face is a novel about the publishing industry, about everything that's messed up with it, about how we talk about books in, in this particular moment, but at the heart of it, it's a psychological thriller about a friendship gone terribly, terribly wrong and all the different versions of a single story. So I hope you all love it. I had a lot of fun writing it anyways. I love that. The conversation starter in the office for sure. And I think it will be for you and your patrons. All right. I think that's it. We are so excited about both of our books that are represented on this May 2023 Library Reads list. If you have uh, questions about voting or if you're ready to start on your June list voting, um, you can check out our website. You'll find some recommendations. Follow our newsletter. You can't turn around without seeing a recommendation. Um, so happy reading, and hopefully we will see you again next month for Library Reads. But before that, we will see you for our episode of the month, our larger episode with an author interview. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Library Love Fest podcast. For more information, go to librarylovefest.com. Enjoying the show? We would love to hear what you think. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Library Love Fest, on Instagram and TikTok at Harper Library. And you can always give us a call and leave us a message. You might end up on the show. That number is 212-207-7773. Be sure to rate and review us and share the show with a friend. Until next time.